true legend begins by showing the royal troops led by a general named Su Chan carrying out a rescue mission against a prince who has been kidnapped by a rebel group. Fortunately, when the rebels almost killed the royal prince, Su Chan arrived just in time and immediately saved him. After cutting the ropes binding the prince with a sword and freeing the prince, the battle between the royal army and the rebel group was unavoidable. Although the royal army at first seemed to have difficulty defeating the rebel group because the number of enemies was too large, they succeeded in repelling most of the rebel members. After conditions were safe enough, Su Chan ordered the royal prince to immediately return to the royal palace. In contrast, Su Chan and the other royal troops would fight against the remaining rebel group members. In the evening, another army chief named General Yuan reported to the royal prince that Su Chan had died fighting the rebels. But not long after, Su Chan came carrying another army chief named Colonel Ma, who was seriously injured, followed by several surviving royal soldiers. After the prince learned that Su Chan was the head of the army leading the rescue mission, he offered him the post of governor. Hearing the offer, Su Chan politely refused and suggested that the prince offer the post to Yuan, who was Su Chan's adopted brother. Hearing the answer, the prince obviously refused because he had known that Yuan was not an honest man. That night, Colonel Ma leads a celebration with the royal troops for their victory in fighting the rebels and their success in saving the prince. They rejoice while drinking wine together, and on that occasion, Su Chan gives his sword to Colonel Ma because he plans to retire from the royal army. The next day, Su Chan met Yuan by the river and said that he wanted Yuan to replace him as the next governor candidate. This is because Su Chan has decided to live a peaceful life and wants to build a family with a woman he loves. Five years have passed, and now Su Chan is married to a woman named Ling and has a son named Feng. When Su Chan was enjoying his family's company, his father, Wang Gun, came to him. He told him that Yuan would be visiting their house soon, so Wang Gun told Su Chan to be more careful because he had a bad feeling about Yuan's arrival. Moreover, he is worried if Yuan intends to take revenge for his father, who was killed by Wang Gun, even though he did all that because Yuan's father had committed a very heinous murder. Hearing his father's concern, Su Chan tries to calm him down and says that Yuan is only visiting as a family who has not seen each other for a long time. The next day, Yuan, now a governor, came to Su Chan's house with other royal guests. Su Chan graciously welcomed hundreds of royal guests who came to his house while Yuan and his troops had already entered the house to meet Wang Gun. When Yuan came, he seemed to have changed a lot where his face was getting paler and more sinister so that Feng, who saw it, became frightened. As soon as Yuan arrived, he immediately greeted Wang Gun and wished him a happy birthday. He apologized because he felt he had not been able to repay Wang Gun's services so far, and those words clearly made Wang Gun nervous. While escorting Yuan into the house, Wang Gun began to talk about Yuan's father's death several decades ago. He explains that he was forced to kill Yuan's father because he had killed innocent people using a forbidden technique known as the Five Poison Punch. Wang Gun apologized to Yuan for all that happened and hoped he would forgive him. Although Yuan replied that he had forgiven Wang Gun, he still held a grudge against him. So he immediately attacked Wang Gun with the same moves his father had used to kill other people. With one stroke of the Five Poison Jutsu passed down by his father, Yuan could easily kill Wang Gun. Ling and Fang saw that Wang Gun had died, decided to run away from that place. Unfortunately, with the large number of troop personnel Yuan brought, they could easily capture and get the two before Yuan. While Su Chan was still busy welcoming guests from the kingdom, one of his servants ran up to him and informed him that Yuan had killed his father. Arriving at the house, Su Chan found all his bodyguards had died lying on the floor and his father, who was dead due to the poisoned blow. Shortly after that, two assassins sent by Yuan came and attacked Su Chan, and the battle between them began. After a fairly fierce battle, the two assassins realized that Su Chan was not an opponent they could easily defeat, so they decided to leave his house. Su Chan immediately chased them behind on his horse while carrying a sword. On the other hand, Yuan is seen making offerings to his deceased father by bringing Su Chan's father's head as a sign that he has succeeded in taking revenge. In the middle of the ritual procession, the two assassins he had previously sent came to Yuan to report that they had failed to kill Su Chan. Not long after, Su Chan arrived at Yuan's place and said that he would kill Yuan because he had killed his father. He immediately attacked Yuan, and the fight between the brothers was unavoidable. After a fierce battle, Su Chan managed to corner Yuan and almost defeated him. But at the last moment, Yuan uses his poison punch to attack him, making him dying. When Yuan almost killed Su Chan, Fang pleaded with Yuan to release his father, and he chose to throw the dying Su Chan into the river. After that, Yuan forcefully separated Ling from Fang and immediately threw Ling into the river with a very strong current. The next day, the surviving Ling managed to save Su Chan and brought him to the river bank. Having had enough energy, she then assembled a stretcher to carry the unconscious Su Chan to safety. Ling kept trying to pull his stretcher for several hours until her hands started to bleed, and she called for help. While climbing a hill, 
The exhausted Ling suddenly slipped, and Su Chan's stretcher almost fell off the hill. Fortunately, a female warrior named Yu arrived on time and immediately grabbed the stretcher so that Su Chan was safe. Yu then took Su Chan and Ling to her house on the hill and let them rest for a while. Yu, who used to mix the herbs, gave them some medicine to neutralize the poison in Su Chan's body and make Ling recover quickly. The next night when Su Chan started to get better, he looked annoyed that his legs were paralyzed due to the poison from Yuan. He was worried that he would not be able to save Fang from Yuan's hands and was afraid that Yuan would kill his son. Seeing Su Chan looking frustrated, Ling tries to calm him and assures him that Yuan would never have the heart to kill a child. A few weeks later, Su Chan, who did not recover, felt depressed and started drinking wine to forget his problems. One day, a poisonous snake was about to bite Su Chan. Fortunately, Ling saw what happened and immediately threw the snake out the window so he could survive. Su Chan then asked Ling if she was not afraid of the snake, but she replied that she was more afraid if her husband gave in to the situation and let Yuan destroy their family life. Hearing this, Su Chan realized that he had to immediately save Fang from Yuan, so he started training to increase his strength. Su Chan began to train hard for days so that he could recover and improve his fighting skills. One day while Su Chan was training, he saw a white swordsman and a black hermit flying into the forest. He ran after the two of them and suddenly entered another dimension he had never seen before. After Su Chan saw the magic of the old hermit, he begged that the hermit was willing to accept him as his disciple. Hearing this, the old hermit replied that he would accept him as his disciple if he could defeat the white warrior. Su Chan accepts the challenge, and the battle between Su Chan and the white warrior begins. But without him realizing it, all the battles with the white warrior and Su Chan's encounters with them were just his imagination. In the evening, at dinner together, Yu checked Su Chan's hands to see his health condition, and she looked surprised that his paralysis had healed entirely. As Su Chan leaves, Yu approaches Ling and whispers that he looks like someone who has lost his sanity. Hearing this, Ling related that Su Chan had always said he was training with a white warrior and an old hermit. But then Yu explains to Ling that her house is in the middle of the forest and no one lives around the forest. The next day, Ling secretly follows Su Chan to find out if he is indeed training with the old hermit. But when she found him, she was surprised to find her husband practicing alone with a bottle of wine that he always carried. At the same time, Su Chan still fantasizes about his fight with the white swordsman under the direction of the old hermit. And after days of intense training, he finally defeated the white warrior and officially became the disciple of the old hermit. On returning to Yu's house, Su Chan finds a letter left by Ling saying that she will go to Yuan's place alone and save Feng. She seemed to no longer be able to rely on Su Chan after thinking he had been under a lot of stress and was just busy fantasizing. On the other hand, Ling, who had arrived at Yuan's place, immediately approached Fang and begged Yuan to free her son. After Yuan found out that Ling was still alive, he looked surprised and began to feel worried that Su Chan was still alive today. Not long after, Yuan's fear really happened. Su Chan came back to save his family. After Su Chan defeats all the guard soldiers, he must return to fight against the two assassins who had almost killed him. Meanwhile, Yuan ordered two soldiers to bury Ling alive, and soon after, he killed them so they wouldn't tell Su Chan where Ling was buried. Back to Su Chan, who managed to kill the two assassins after a fierce battle. After freeing Fang from the iron chains, Su Chan fought Yuan in a very intense fight. After a long fight, Su Chan finally defeated him and almost killed him. But before he kills Yuan, Fang asks his father to force Yuan to tell him where Ling is buried. As soon as they found out where Ling was, Su Chan and Fang immediately ran towards the location and started digging in the ground to find Ling's chest. Unfortunately, after Su Chan managed to find Ling, she had already died from running out of oxygen for quite a while. A year after Ling's death, Su Chan lived as a beggar with Fang and was busy drinking wine daily. While they were resting, suddenly, a riot started because the residents were suing the thugs who held an illegal fighting event in the city. Colonel Ma, who happened to be passing by, tried to break up the riot. After knowing the origin of the problem, Colonel Ma asked that the illegal fighting venue be closed, but the thugs rejected this and said that the one who could stop the illegal fight was the winner. Hearing this, Colonel Ma was forced to join the fight so he could stop the illegal event that had been troubling the residents. After that, he gave Fang some money without realizing that the person beside Fang was Su Chan. That evening, Su Chan goes to a bar to get some bottles of wine, but since he has no money, he gets into a fight. During the fight, Su Chan, who was drunk, again hallucinated and thought he was fighting with someone using drunken moves. In the commotion, Colonel Ma arrives and realizes at once that the beggar-looking person is Su Chan. Seeing Su Chan's condition, he immediately advised him to stop drinking and start finding work for Fang's brighter future. However, because Su Chan was already deeply depressed, he decided to hand his son over to Colonel Ma so that Fang could have a better life. The next day, Fang accompanies Colonel Ma to an illegal battle arena and fights against fighters from Western countries. At that time, 
Colonel Ma had to fight against a burly fighter from Germany named Anton the Killer. Anton seemed superior to Colonel Ma in that fight because his physical strength was much greater. Seeing Colonel Ma dying and nearly killed by Anton, Fang bravely stepped into the battle arena and bit Anton's leg. As a result, Fang was almost beaten by Anton with a very hard punch, but fortunately, Su Chan arrived just in time and attacked Anton with a punch. After successfully protecting Fang and bringing him to the arena's edge, the fight between Anton and Su Chan began. With the drunk stance that Su Chan has mastered, he finally managed to defeat the strongest fighter from Germany in a short time. And after he won the match, the illegal fight was officially closed. The film closes with a scene where Su Chan is practicing drunken moves while hallucinating that his wife, Ling, is accompanying him. The moral that can be learned from this movie is that in the difficult times we experience in our lives, we must not give up on the circumstances and must continue to fight for a better life.